know, I my life was such a um, it's it's like God is guiding me into a stepping like a like a like a staircase that's leading me to my goal, and I don't know what my goal is yet, but when I went on the pilgrimage, it was weird because I went on the pilgrimage and I had nothing because I I just went with what I needed, packed as much army army dry food that when you put water in it, it kind of just becomes a meal as much as I could. I had nothing. I had a. I slept outside for the whole time. I walked the whole thing. I didn't have even that much money. I didn't. I only had like two changes of clothes because the the backpack was so heavy that I didn't want to bring extra stuff. So I would change. I would always have the same pair of clothes that I would change into. At night, I would wash it. I would. Then in the morning, I would hang it. And if it's not dried, I would clip it onto my backpack and put on my next pair of clothes and hope it dries by the time I would keep walking. So I had nothing. I I feel like I went to the the bottom bottom of this chain of society where I became like almost homeless. I'm sitting at a you know supermarket waiting for it to close because I want to sleep on the bench, but I want to lay down with people walking around. So I'm waiting for it to close. Um, I'm looking for food. People are giving me bread, you know, water, you know, that kind of stuff, and I'm accepting it and. That what the pilgrimage taught me was, it put me in that place where I had nothing. I didn't know why at the time, and it put me in this thing that, it made me realize that you know, yeah, a piece of bread is a piece of bread, but it just depends on where you are in your life. That piece of bread could be be worth its weight in gold to you. And if I didn't go on the pilgrimage, this this whole um, tsunami thing, when I went up there, I wouldn't feel comfortable just bringing water or just bringing some some ramen to them and stuff you know but I guess on the pilgrimage it taught me that you know when you have nothing man just the help that you're getting even even the old lady that walked by me once and had me a piece of bread for me I just I mean I felt so much gratis, gratitude to her and I and I realized you know it's just a piece of bread but because of where I was so it was funny because God put me in that in the pilgrimage. I don't know why I decided to do that, but He put me to to do that pilgrimage. Put me into that side side of society where I had nothing, like almost like a, a homeless person. And then all of a sudden this tsunami thing happens, and I'm standing on the other side. I'm driving up in a Hummer and in air condition, eating so much food. I'm trying trying to get fat after my pilgrimage, and I'm going up to these people. I mean, of course they're in a worse situation because they didn't choose to do this. But I'm sitting there looking and thinking, that's where I was like a couple months ago. Like they have nothing. So I realized then, you know, that how a pack of cigarettes with people who smoked or, you know, a, like sashimi plates. I made sashimi plates for people, you know. It's, I realized that it gave me more drive to help and it helped me, it made it easier for me to realize that this, how, how great the feeling of joy giving to someone that you don't know. So, you know, I, I felt like my life was going in phases like that. So even now, it's still, I'm, I'm getting a lot by helping these people. But I'm pretty sure that God has another plan. So I don't know what it is. But it's interesting how it, my life happens like that. おい、<笑><笑> I like that. They made sashimi plates, man. That's so awesome. It makes you feel so good to see this, man. I mean, we get. I mean, the, all the shit we're doing is it gets you so tired and you're spending all my money. But you know, it's, it's shit like this that fucking man makes it all worthwhile. The movement right now, what's happening is because of the um, the lack of help in the evacuation centers, they're trying to get people out ASAP and get them into temporary housing. 
the problem with that was once they're in temporary housing, they're cut from the any supplies. So they got to do the food on their own, pay their own electricity bill. Um, they were given, some places were given so much money. Some places were given only a 10 pound bag of rice, each family. Some people were given $300, you know, just for not a month, you know. I mean, if it was 10 pounds of bag, rice a month or, or 300 bucks a month, you know, at least they're going to continuously help them. But it was like one time, okay, you're gone. Here, take this and we're done with you kind of thing. A lot of the elderly people who are not going to start their lives over, not don't want to find jobs, they have a problem with suicide right now up there. So that's the position we're in right now, where the people are moving into evacuation, uh, out of the evacuation centers into temporary housing, and they don't want to. They had mm -hmm. to kick people out because um, they were they were set where they they had three meals a day, they had a place to shower. I mean, everything was taken care of there. So you know, you get your own privacy, you get your own place, but then you don't know how you're gonna bring them the income. You don't know. Every month to month, you got stuff you got to worry about, bills you got to pay. Um, I guess the, the the responsibility of that was worse than living in cardboard boxes. So it was a big, big problem. But if I think as of as we speak right now, it's almost done. I think pretty much there's no evacuation centers. Everyone's in temporary housing now. So suicide and the the fact of these people trying to battle day to day, trying to live. And make make ends meet month by month when they don't even have a job. You know this, that's a problem right now. So that's what I'm. I, next time I go up, that's what I'm thinking of doing is going up with basic necessities and walking through the um, temporary housing and showing them the list of things I have and asking these people what they need and bringing it back to them. You know, it's gonna. It's it's for me for people that help. The each phase is another battle to get break into the people so i feel like i'm starting over that's probably my next movement that's the that's the situation right now up there <laughs> it's so cool to see them writing it down what they want they usually don't say anything it's getting, I'm getting closer to these people every day is a battle for these people every day is something hard you've lost your loved ones you lost your house you lost everything you're sitting in the Evacuation center with nothing, nothing to read, nothing to do. And the worst thing is probably not knowing what, where your future is going to go. There is no future. Oh. He said, this is stuff that was left over yet. They didn't get washed away. So this is like a souvenir. MMA gloves. a key holder, man. Thank you for coming to take care of after. The other thing is, you know, a lot of people, they give money to big associations and they don't see anything happening. So the, I, I feel it's, it's, it's not so good because a lot of people that have the desire to help, it will be just a, a whim on the moment when they see something on TV. And when they give their money and it's done, it's over. But if you can actually see what your money is doing, I mean, I think that the, the desire to help would be continuous. So what I'm doing is I'm making these bracelets. Um, these bracelets aren't only just fashion, but there's also a meaning to it. Um, I believe you get a lot out of it too. But what I'm doing with this these bracelets is, of course, I'm making sure I have food on the table and things to do. But whatever I have left, I'm I'm using it to move up because, you know, gasoline. I, when I get up there, I got to get a hotel, the food, and bring buying supplies for the people. I'm basically using all that because a lot of these people now think that the whole thing is having a business and getting a big bank account, buying a big house, driving a nice car, which is also good. But I'm a step above these people. I realize that instead of making myself in that situation, it's such a greater thing to have the joy of giving. And so whatever I'm making, I feel like I'm getting richer in my soul because I'm helping so much people. So. I'm using that money to move up north. And the more that I can make, the bigger things I can do. Right now, it's 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 a minimal thing right now. I mean, my, me and my brother ran a charity at um, Kambate, Japan on May 1st, and that brought in some money that helped out a lot. And it's still I'm still using that money a lot to help. And we're, we're, I'm getting in increments from Egan, so that's helping. But basically, I'm selling these bracelets and 
that's how I'm actually traveling. So if you if you feel like you want to be a part of it and you want to actually see something happening rather than donating to Red Cross, you can go onto my webpage, destinyforever.com, and look at something you want. I mean, you know, it's not like you're just giving money away. You're getting something out of it. And then go onto Facebook and watch my movement. So even my next trip up there will be date, um, a lot of data on that, on what, I do, what I'm doing. Rescue cat, rescue cat. This is fish, dude. Yeah, this is perfect. I believe there's two lives. I believe there's a physical life and a spiritual life. And I believe the things that you do in your spirit, your physical life, will guide you into your next life. And for people, normal people, they don't, they, they know there's a spiritual life, but they don't really take it seriously. Because the whole big thing is the physical life. Being healthy, living long, doing things that's safe, staying away from danger. And for me, of course, I want to be healthy, stay away from danger, but I don't try to avoid it so much. You know, like if there's a problem, if I see a car overturn burning in fire, and the first instinct is to get away because it's going to blow up. But for me, I already saw it. I want to know if there's people in there. I want to know if I can help people. And for me, because I believe that the spiritual life is probably 99% of eternity, and this physical life is as, as long as it may seem, 80 years, 90 years, it's still it's a speck of sand on the beach. Um, I believe that I do not want to sacrifice my next movement into a spiritual life, the level that I'm going to be at, for to extend my physical life. So I, I believe that you know the the way the things you do in your physical life, and especially the biggest test of dying, the way you die, is going to catapult you in the next life, which is going to be eternity. So, you know, I'm not going to sacrifice a speck of sand, grain of sand on the beach length of time for something that's going to be eternity. I'll die tomorrow if I can die with honor. Because if I die with honor, I believe it will catapult me into a higher level, into the spiritual life, which is eternity. And I'll be sitting cool and, you know, have, you know I feel like it's heaven. You know, spiritual life will be heaven. So the reason why I can do these things that I think is right, even if it's scary or if it's, it's going to be hard, I believe that... What I do in this, the physical life is going to help me in the, the um, spiritual. That's why I do some crazy things. That's why, you know, even in the ring, you know, I'm probably the, one of the only fighters in the world that's never tapped. And it's not like I fought all tomato cans. I fought, like, some of the best fighters in the world. And, and it's not like I've won every fight. I've had places, the times where I've been pounded to submission, where um, the referee stops it. I've been choked out. I've been knocked out. I mean, <laughs> pretty much everything's happened. And... I've never tapped, and it's, that's probably the reason why is because physically I believe that all these hard times that we're, hardships that we're facing, even if it's in the fight, even if it's um, in life or the radiation and everything, I believe it's, it's a test thrown at you to build yourself spiritually, to prepare you for the next movement. And that's why I always, I would never, if I think it's right, I'll do it. いつの日か